Hello and welcome to the Knit Girls. This is episode 430. I'm Laura, also known as Lala. I'm Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. I hope I remember to turn that down. I did not, but that's okay. It's down now. Um, it is someday. Oh, it's my son's birthday. It is March the 4th, <laughs> 2019. You're winning at the Mom Award hey, today. <laughs> look. So my son turned 16 today and he we're doing something this weekend with him and a friend but um i got i went and got him three different kinds of sushi wow did you take it to him at school no um and then because they only get like 20 minutes yeah to eat. that's true and then i got him a giant well like a quarter um sheet cake of an ice cream cake Aww. And I told him he can just eat himself sick. Like, <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> there you go. Um, but yeah, this weekend we're going to take him out to like the lo local Dave and Buster style place. Main event? Yeah, whatever it is. Yeah, I and think then it's main event. Load them up with, you know, some money on their little cards to play the Video games arcade games. For forever. Yeah. Or go bowling or play laser tag. Yeah, whatever. As yeah. long as they don't leave the building and they don't drink. I don't really care what they do. So, um, yeah. But I'm on call, so I can't. we can't really do it. Plus, it's a school night. Can't today. really do anything yeah. today. So, anyway, that's enough useless chatter for hmm. the beginning of the podcast. Do you want to go first? I'm in a really crappy place okay. to go first. I'm about to bind off. So, therefore, I can go oh first. Oh, my God. Did you hear the smug in that? <laughs> There's still another one to be knit. And they <laughs> won't count for House Cup because they were um, already started. Oh, and I have to pick up the thumb and knit the thumb a yeah, little bit longer. Yeah, that'll take you. Yeah. So, hour, this is kind of based on Stock and Night Hand Warmers by Pearl Soho, but I changed everything. <laughs> so, except for the original stitch count. Um, so this is out of Yarn Fairy in the Pixies colorway in the purple, or yarn in the colorway Purple Rest. I am knitting it on size four needles, Magic Loop. This is the secret sauce. Are you ready? So I cast on 44 stitches and then I knit around four inches of stockinette. And then, um, I took one stitch from the end on both sides and placed a marker. When I got to those stitches, I knit in the front and the back, knit in the front and the back, um, and then did a knit round, and then I just knit to the stitch right after the marker, knit in the front and the back of that, and so on until there were 18 stitches between the two markers. I bound those off, um, and then the next round I cast on four stitches there, worked another two inches of stockinette. Then around an inch of garter, and now I'm going to bind off, and then I'll pick up. I don't, if I did it again, I think on the next time you have time to do I at do, least once. <laughs> well, another one. I cast on the four because I was worried that this thumb gusset wouldn't be wide enough. Yeah. But I think I could have just cast on two, which was the original that I used. But I'm going to pick it up and narrow that, because that's too big of a yeah. gap for me right there. Um, too much of my thumb is exposed, so I'm going to knit up to, like, there, and then bind off. Well, there, and then start the same, um, garter stitch, and then I'll bind off again. I might do one more. I think I'll do five pearl ridges, because odds always look better. But yeah, so, hand warmers, yay! Um, that is living in my fat squirrel pigeon bag. So that got some work during work because the book fair is there. And then um, the other thing that's on my needles is a Milo, and it's not in a bag because I just started it yesterday when Leslie was over. So this is a Milo by Tiki Knits. I'm hoping that this is not twisted. Uh oh. No, I don't think it is. Nope, it's definitely twisted. Never mind, it's not a Milo. It's going in the trash. Oh, shit. <laughs> it's totally twisted. It's not going in the trash. It's, it's getting unwound. Huh. That's unfortunate. And it's like an hour's worth of work. It'll be fun. So it's a Mobius for anybody who's <laughs> following, which means that 
the, it got the bottom ends don't meet. It's a it's a, it got like twisted. an infinity sign. It's twisted. Yeah. Hmm. Which can happen sad. at the join sometimes. Yeah, and you can fix it if you catch it the first round. Mm-hmm. But apparently, I did not, not so much on the fifteenth or sixteenth yeah, round. Twentieth. Well, I'm gonna rip this out while we talk. Um. So this was a Milo. Going to be a Milo. <laughs> But now it's not. But the reason why I bought, why I started Milo out of it is I wanted to see how this yarn acted. And I'm really kind of digging it. Enough to knit a second time. Maybe I'll knit a hat the second time. Maybe I'll scrap the Milo totally. So the yarn is? Cotton Comfort by Green Mountain Spinnery. It is a woolen spun. I'm going to let you feel it. It's a woolen spun wool cotton blend. Hmm. Does it soften with washing? I don't know. I might just notice watch him play that game. It's not unpleasant. It's just a no. little, like, dry feeling. Yeah, it kind of feels like a silk blend a little bit. Yeah. Do you want me to? Yeah, I got it. I appreciate it, though. I'll let you talk. Um, and then the last thing. I have a handful of stitch markers. The last thing that got swatched for yesterday is I'm going to start a new sweater. Um, this is three different colors of Miss Babs Yowza. So there's this blue gray, a lighter blue white variegate, and then a dark variegate. And this, I wanted to see how the color is washed and how the swatch washed and also swatch. This is going to be, um, a curtain call sweater. So it calls for six in my size, 600 yards. So it's of striped. Three it's not different. like a fade. Yep. It's striped all the way through. It is not a fade. And then this gray is used for the collar and the cuffs. So, if I'm understanding right, mm -hmm. these here, from here to the bottom, is actually two colors. Even though, to, yep. to me, it really looks like one color. It's well blended. Oh, really? Yeah. So, my question to you is, stripe-wise, is that going to be enough of a contrast? Yeah, I definitely see the four stripes there. The horror stripes. Oh, I think I'm misunderstanding. So this is a striped mm -hmm. swatch. Yeah. I thought this was a variegate, and this was one, and this was one. So the dark is one variegate. Right, but what I'm saying this is, is I thought, variegate. like, this was skein one, this oh. was skein two, and this was skein three. That's no. that's why I was confused. <laughs> no. No wonder you were looking at me like I'm crazy. Like, those are very different colors. <laughs> they are very different colors. <laughs> but you're my favorite. <laughs> um, and I did get gauge. I measured using my Acreworks yeah, swatch, swatch tool, tool from the knitter's kit, knit kit. Yeah, but you can also buy them individually. Mm -hmm. But this one I did steal out of my knit kit. So... I think it'll be good stripes. Yeah, well, it's now that I understand. <laughs> it's more subtle stripes. Like, I thought you somehow found two variegates that were so amazingly well matched Aww. that I couldn't tell the difference. No. And that that was just, you know, the pooling of a, a part no, of it. No, like, these two are definite. The top yeah, that's very is definitely di more subtle. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I think that's a good match. I think it'll be fine. There's some incredible ones out, like Little Hip Kitty's got a rainbow and gray mm. one that's really pretty. But I think this will be good for me. That is it for me for knitting. I think that's more than enough since I'm ripping this out. But it's doing well with the rip out, too. It's not like... You know how some stuff will, like... Catch on itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't want to be ripped or out. Or break as you rip it out. Or break while you're trying to sew in the ends. <laughs> or break while you're knitting. <laughs> So, um, all right. So, Especially woolen spun is a little yeah. bit more fragile, but this is a good example of woolen spun. Yeah. With some strength to it, but also very light and airy. So the only thing I've got on the needles this week, I've got my Constellate hat, which I've done like two rows on. Um, totally counts. Totally does count. This is out of Madeline Tosh, Tosh Merino Light in the Blue Bonnet Highway color. And the Constellate hat is a Hunter Hammerson pattern. Um, that's still living in my Matter Root bag. And 
gosh, it's cold in this room. My my it's latch on here really is really cold in this room. <laughs> I put on a hat once I got up to this room. It is so Mississippi doesn't get as cold as the rest of the world. But um, it was a high of like 30 today in Mississippi with a wind chill of like feels like 19 mm. all day. And it feels like 19. Yeah, when I went out we to get the mail earlier, I was like, good gracious. Like, you know, it's been happening everywhere, but this like yo yoing in temperature is frustrating. This year, especially. And especially, I was talking to my boss about it. Like, it's irritating me because we're missing snow by like two hours. Yes. Yeah. Or two degrees. Yeah, like a cold front comes through and it's like, hey, it's 34 degrees, but we're done raining. Now it's 32. I'm like, no, that's not how it works. The rain turned to ice on my back porch and Pearl won't go running over it when it's ice. When it's water, she's like full on. Yeah. Like, I will go running right through this. But not when it's ice. Like Beethoven with his big old... Uh, the dog from the movie. Not, yeah. Not the composer. I haven't seen that movie in forever. Yeah. Me neither. That's very 90s of you. Um, so I knit on the Constellate and I cast on something new. So this is something I've been wanting to knit since I saw it, which I don't know when that was. Uh, it looks like it came out in April of last year, but I know I didn't see it until a couple months ago. And it's called Go With The Flow, and it is from Marie something. Olive Knits is her name. I forget what her actual... Yeah, she actual... just published a book. Marie Green. She's the person who does, like, the four-day sweaters. Oh, is that the same person? Yeah, she did, like, a four... She did the beekeeper yeah. sweater that a lot of people were knitting. Um, I kind of feel like a sweater in four days is never going to happen for me, so... Um, well, I clearly not to... for me. I knit the sleeves on mine like seven times. So, <laughs> so looks, did you bring it? Up um, here? No, but I have a picture that okay. I was going to share. So this is a brioche sort of a cocoon wrap. Um, it's basically knitted as a T, and then you take the short ends of the T at the top and you fold them it down. It reminds me of like when you put a sweater over your back, like very yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't... again, nineties like polo ad kind of. I don't know. That feels like you're categorizing it as very waspy, and I don't know that I qualify as a waspy. I don't know what waspy means. I've never heard that term before. You've never heard of wasp? No. Like wasp? Oh. No. Is it a southern term? I don't know, but I mean, it references like... Like mean girls -y? No, it's like well-to-do rich white women. Okay. No, I've never heard that term before. So here's one that's similar in color to the one that I'm knitting. I like it. Um, Are there any on people? Yeah, so there's one. Aw, she looks so happy. Yeah. That makes me super happy for her. I get it to focus on the lady instead of me. I guess not. Um, let's see if I can find some more of it on people. Frustratingly, very few. Here's one that's kind of... Yeah. So it's just sort of a comfy around the house layer. And it's got sort of a shawl collar because of the way that it's knit. Um, and it's brioche. It's all brioche. And it's Which knit is flat. Leslie's happy place. I love brioche. I love to knit it. Um, so it's the same row over and over and over throughout the entire pattern. Literally the only time it's different is when you're adding stitches removing stitches or casting on or binding off. That, that's it. That's the only time that the pattern is different. So you start, like this will be the short end that'll go like over this side. It'll get, so this will be in the back and then this will get folded over and joined. I mean, you add ribbing and stuff at the bottom. Um, so that's like 11 and a half inches and then you're making good progress I on started, that. I added more stitches yesterday, and this part has to get to like 30-something inches. Hmm. And then you reduce back down to, it's very simple. You just double the stitches, and then you reduce back down to half. And then you join it and do some ribbing. Huh. Um, so it's not complicated at all. Um, it's a brioche, which I find I can do pretty... Uh... I don't want to say mindlessly, but that's like, I get into a rhythm and I don't have to think too much about it. Um, gotcha. 
But this, oh, the yarn. I haven't talked about the yarn. So this is um, from Stranded. And this is Flower Crown. So it's sort of a beigey cream with pops of all these different colors. Yeah, it's pretty. Like there's purple and teal and orange and some red. Um, and this is, so it's Stranded Dye Works, the Merino DK, and the Flower Crown colorway. Yeah, how many skins do you have? A lot. Good. More than I'll need. Good. Uh, several skins. Um, which is good, because then I can make some smaller accessories or mix it with something else. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm only just you getting into the second color skin. work and something else. Yeah. would be really pretty, or stripes. Like a body of a sweater and then mix in color work. Yeah. Or like a color work yoke. Mm -hmm. um, oh, there's even bits of blue. I didn't notice that before. It's pretty. So the only issue I've had on this is remembering which side is the right side because they're exactly identical. You just essentially just have to pick one side to be the right side. So are you using a progress I just keeper? Yeah, I've got a little. So Cute. with our goodie bags last year, one of the items that we gave away was this tin, a little tin, like T-I-N, and it was full of... Um, all sorts of notions, scissors, tape measure, um, needle protectors, yeah, um, and it's got a magnetic lid where you can put your stitch markers, two different scissors, like a little um, row counter thingy, cable needles, um, yeah, all sorts of things. It's, uh, with pointed sticks is the Yeah, creating shop. with sticks. Oh, creating with sticks, sorry. Dot Etsy.com. Um, she was absolutely lovely to work with, uh, and I use mine all the time, and I'm not going to lie, we ordered extra, because we always order extra for goodie bag stuff, because something will happen, somebody's will get broken, or whatever. Yeah. Um, or imprint will forget to send 20 goodie bags, yeah. you know, whatever. Um, and I've got one in pretty much every project bag I have, because <laughs> I, you know, the extras came home with me, so I need there to bring Laura a couple. But... Yeah, so that's pretty much what I've been doing, this week. and I've been on call, which hasn't been terrible yet, but Good. all the change, because I work for um, a gaming company, which is 24-7, always, they're always open, come spend your money anytime, <laughs> uh, you can't change things on the weekends, it is verboten. <laughs> Um, oh, yeah, because the weekends would be the busiest right. days, I would think. So, anytime we have to do a system change... I think, like, Wednesdays at 2 a.m. or something would be the best. Am I correct? Yes. Yes! It's usually Tuesdays, but Tuesdays okay. or Wednesdays, that way you have time to catch any problems before the weekend yeah. comes. No, that makes total sense. Um, Look at me which guessing is things correctly. great, except that means I have to be up at... Like, I've got two changes... Um, on Wednesday morning and one sort of late on Tuesday morning like 4 a.m. instead of like 2 a.m. Um, you also have to battle like uh, time zones. Some yes. people are in Pacific. Some people are in Eastern. Some people are literally in India. So we have to balance all that. And your company has casinos across the world so it's not just mm -hmm. the U.S. that's being affected by any changes. We opened Dubai recently. That's cool. We're hoping to get into, um, actually, I don't know what's public knowledge and what's not, so I'm going to shut up at this point. Because <laughs> we have, like, internal town hall meetings, and probably a lot of it's public, but I don't know what is and isn't. And I know Dubai is because it's open, but. Yeah. Um, yeah. God, sorry. You guys have to sit through that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Excuse me. I have a finished thing. Yay! But it's I not up see. here. Um, oh, yeah, it's downstairs. it's downstairs. I bet you wish you were wearing it right now in this frigid icebox of a room. <laughs> so, um, I finally finished my uh, Wrought Iron by Anna Johanna, which Yay. I'm sure you remember because I've shown it every week for two months. Um, I had Laura take some pictures of me, which I is... I did. They were pretty terrible. It's fine. It shows the sweater. So this is what it turned out looking That's like. That's what my backyard looks like, FYI. Um, I'm very happy with how it came out. This is one a little further away. This is what my body looks like. I think it looked, it looked really, really good on you yeah. yesterday. I'm very happy with how it came out. Um, I'm definitely happy with 
the weight of it being fingering weight versus a heavier weight because um, I feel like it's wearable like I wore it that whole day at Laura's house and wasn't hot or anything and I usually get warm pretty quickly so Although I leave my house fairly cool this is true which is fine with me for the most part um so I got a text from Steve of Dramatic Notes this morning <laughs> And the text said, uh, so I paused an older episode of yours last night, and I got up this morning and was going to hit play, but then this regal, <laughs> badass goddess was staring into my soul. That's this so was like funny. just a, a screen where it paused in the episode. Yeah, that's so funny. And I was like, dude, I couldn't be that fierce if I tried. That was I a total it. accident, but it made me great. laugh. And then I got pictures of little baby. Linus in my little hat. Oh, look at that. Little baby Linus in my little hat. I'm so happy. I love when I get pictures of babies. And stuff that you've knit. Yeah, or people in general. The best. And stuff that you've knit. So, anyway, I need to put this up. I keep looking at it thinking it's going to fall and then doing nothing about it. All right. <laughs> so, that's it. Those are my finished objects. You have one. I have one. Aren't you grateful I'm... for it right now? <laughs> I'm super grateful. I wish I had my blanket with me as well. And, I don't know, I'm glad I have my Uggs on as well. It's not that cold. So, I uh, am wearing my... Oh, those are needles. Those are needles. <laughs> I'm going to stand up for a second. I'm wearing my... Oh, it already has creases in it. That's amazing. My the bulky easy, easy yeah bulky easy one by Hohi Locatelli. It is out of uh, Brooklyn Tweed Quarry Boy. in the sulfur colorway, which apparently wrinkles. I'm gonna add that to its positive qualities. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is an ever semi natural like my waist is here. Oh, you guys can't see which side. Like here, and it. Has around, after blocking, I would say around 10 inches east. Or more, yeah. Or more. Um, and that's what it's supposed to have. So my plans to have less ease totally failed. <laughs> as per usual. Um, it has kind of a boat neck. And then an exposed seam. On both there. And where you pick up stitches. For the arm. For the arm. Um, I like the sweater itself. It is um, just an oversized hangout, drink tea, knit kind of sweater. I got to the point where I kind of hate the yarn. <laughs> um, so it is not the softest yarn. Leslie's going to try it on in a couple minutes after we record. Oh, okay. Because um, you said you wanted to. Yeah. It is already starting to pill after being worn for an hour. Um See? Yeah. I'm getting little fuzz balls, which is the nature of woolen yeah, spun. because it's not as tightly spun, so but the fibers this has like work no out easier. Woolen spun can have twist, and this has no twist in it. Um, it's a little bit of a... It's supposed to be Columbia wool, and... Turkey, maybe? See, um, that's what I thought, and you told me it was just Columbia. I think it's Columbia. I don't know. It's not super soft. Um, and when I was weaving in the ends, it continually, because the pressure of just going in and out, continually broke the ends, which made me a little bit grumpy. So, like, Neelix just tried to jump on me. Neelix is Leslie's dog. And I was like, no, not the sweater. Because <laughs> I can see just a uh, claw just ripping it apart. Because Laura's dog jumps up, but she doesn't actually touch you. No, she's like a circus dog. Yeah, whereas she my dog She jumps up and just do. balances on her back yeah. legs. Um, yeah, so it's oversized. It's I like the pattern itself. I have the sleeves rolled up because it did. It grew a lot with the washing, um, which I needed it to grow some for sure. Because I had those gauge issues. Those gauge issues worked themselves out once I blocked it. Like, this definitely had more texture pre-blocking. So just believe in the miracles of blocking. It will happen. It's funny because sometimes it does, it works and sometimes no. it just makes things sometimes terrible. Sometimes it's just it's terrible. So yeah, um, it's going to be like a around the house warm sweater. So, yeah. It's all good. I think your mom would love something like that. 
Hmm. I don't know. We should have her try on my bulky. Like, she can try on this, too. And yeah, she'll swim in it, because she's tall, but she's she's a little... She's little. Yeah, she doesn't feel that way right now. Well. But, yeah, comparatively. I understand that. No, no <laughs> woman ever feels that way, um, but... Yeah, she's doing Weight Watchers, and Wheezy's losing all this weight again, and she's not, and she's getting frustrated with him. Which is going to make their three-month trip together to Alaska super fun. <laughs> but, yeah. It's, um... It's warm. But not super still warm. still got VM in this. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'll be picking out VM until the day I die. <laughs> like, I'm going to bury you in this sweater. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> Uh, VM is short for veg matter. Yeah, there was a lot of little bits of twigs and or hay, or, hay yeah. which I mean, I'm getting that with the Green Mountain Spinnery too, because any, you know, fleece that's not been coated, that's what you're going to get. It's a sign of a healthy sheep is they're mm -hmm. eating, so. Um, and coated literally means putting a coat. We little coats. Yeah, on the sheep. And there is some debate about that, whether it's healthy for the sheep or not, and it can cause the fleeces to break a little bit if they're, the because tips. you're supposed to continually change out the coats as the sheep grow bigger mm. and their fiber grows bigger. But some people, I mean, that seems do like not it have enough difficult. coats yeah. Yeah, to do that. So yeah, it's cozy. Um, it was very, very easy to knit. I don't know that it would be a good first sweater because you are picking up from the opposite sides of the seams. But not very complicated. I mean, at you knit all. it in less than two weeks. Yeah, once I got moving on it, I mean, I started it on like the tenth, I think, um, and I finished it by the twenty eighth. But we were gone the fourteenth, fifteenth, sixteenth, seventeenth, eighteenth, where nineteen really, where it didn't get touched. So, yeah, um, it's interesting because it's a wool and spun bulky, so it weighs six hundred and fifty grams, which is about a pound and a half. But that's way lighter than it would if this be was a worsted. worsted. I think it would be around three pounds. So that aspect of it's cool. I just need to find other woolen spun options besides Brooklyn Tweed, I think. Um, which is kind of why I was exploring Green Mountain Spinnery. So I'm excited to see how that cotton wool blend really knits up and washes. When I don't create a Mobius out of it. Oh, I have another finish object. Oh, it matches my hat, too. <laughs> I finished my Desert Vista Dye Work socks for February in the Strawberry Shortcake colorway. Um, oh, the sweater was knit on size 8s, just FYI. Uh, these were knit on size 0s. I used 64 stitches and I knit round, 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 and round and used Wendy Johnson's basic gusset toe-up pattern. I might switch it up on this next... Uh, next time I have the Martian colorway, which I think you've used before. Yeah, I like it. To knit, um, cause Harry Potter has cup, it's like reds, golds, and oranges. And I was like, done, done, done. Have I knit the Martian or do I? I know I've knit War of the Worlds. Oh no. And the Lightning Struck Heart. Well, I mean, I've knit several of Susan's. Yeah. I know I own the Martian. I don't know if I've knit it or not. You should totally knit it with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's doable. So those are my strawberry shortcake socks, which matched my strawberry shortcake hat from, um, out of Ponky, another crafty girl yarn. So those are my two finished objects. You have some spinning, right? Nope. Do you not? Okay. I, I finished it last spinning. week. And... Did you? Terrible friend for not remembering things. Everything about my life. Yeah. You are a terrible person. Yep. I have three finished skeins. One is very small. Jeez. Um... This is the leftovers of the Lorna's laces that I had to spin because oh, yeah, I didn't soulmate, get yeah. through enough. It's not soulmate, uh, it's, it's their fiber. Yeah, it was originally like 10 ounces in a... Yeah, yeah. I think I spun nine, so this is the leftover. So I have a total of 900 and like 60 yards out of this. This is 100 yards. So the pattern that I want to knit out of this actually says go until you have 10% of your yarn left. Mm. So... I have like 870 on one skein and then this will be like my safety yeah. net. So that's perfect. And then, and that was a two ply. This is a, also, everything's a two ply today. This is a two ply out of spotted circus alpaca. I love that one. 
super bright. It's one of her, like, stained glass series. Yeah, it's bananas, and I love it. It's got, like, 25% fire star, 75% wool. It's very, very shiny, and it's really fun. And this is 260 yards. So not a ton of yardage, but it's fun. I would say it's around DK weight. Maybe a little bit lighter. It's pretty. Yeah. I enjoy it. And then the last thing that I have spun is a bat from Knit Spin Farm. This was spun woolen, which means, um, talking a lot about woolen today. Bats are naturally carded, so there's a lot of air that's added to the fibers. And then I spun it long draw, which adds even more air, but it also creates more of a thick and thin. Also, I was winding this very quickly at the end of the night and my skein winder collapsed on itself, so I have this random, but I don't know where it fits in, but when I wind, I'll find out. Yeah. So, uh, this was a bat that I won, actually, in her monthly contest. She has a contest where you show things that you finished, and you get, like, 5% off per month that you post, so it's, like, 15 or 20% off if you do all three months in a row. And then she also does a random drawing. And this is 216 yards. It's pretty. Well, it's fun. Yeah. Ooh, very, very squishy. I think that's what it's going to become, actually. It might become this pattern in a hat. Well, this is too light, but similar. Uh, yeah. So that is it for me for spinning lots of two plies. I still have that... Excuse me. The, um, it's just going to drive me nuts. Oh, I think I, did I do it right? I think it's that way. Um, I, nope. I still have the three ply that I'm spinning. Um, I finished the singles and I'm letting them rest for the op opposing three ply. Mm -hmm. And then I started spinning, uh, hip strings yesterday, but it's still on the wheel. But I'll show it to you guys next time. And that's it for me for spinning. I'm going to try to spin. I spun just, um, I dropped those needles and now I'm trying to get them. I spun just, let's see, around 12 ounces. No, less than that. Eight ounces around about last month. So I'd like to pop up and spin at least a pound and a half this month. We'll see if it gets, if it happens. I foresee a lot of like over spring break sitting around and talking and spending yeah. my life, but that might not actually happen. We'll have to see. So that's it for me for spinning. You have, you're going to try those. Yeah. The, I talked about the sock inside a sock last week. Um, I still, I haven't cast it on and I probably won't for a couple of weeks, but it is something that I am going to do. Um, and then I'm going to start a new pair of socks out of the DVD. Yeah. The Martian color. Yeah. Uh, let's see. As far as books, I have, I'm still re-listening to Kate Daniels. I'm on the very last one, which is binds or shifts. What is it? Magic something. Magic triumphs. Yeah. Um, so I'm on the last one of those, and then I've got several books queued up that I want to listen to after that. Yeah, and that's a paranormal kind of romance. Yeah, male, female. Um, I mean, there are romantic aspects to it, but it really plays a small part in the in the story. Um, and I'm re-listening to My Dad Wrote a Porno. I'm on season... And that's a podcast. It is. It's hilarious. We've talked about it several times. Um, I'm on season four again. Um, our friend Amy went to a live taping. Yes. This past weekend, which I was super jealous of. Um, and proud, because she's very introverted and went by herself to yeah. something like that. Which would be hard for me to do. I do a lot of things by myself, but being in a crowd would be hard, you know. Yeah, no, I agree. And they were sitting on, like, couches, yeah. too. It was that kind of venue. Um, yeah, I really haven't been reading, reading this week, just because I've been on call, so, like, I haven't known how long I'm going to get to sleep in fits and starts, so 
Um, You've been sleeping more? I've been trying to catch up on sleep when the time permits and just turning off my brain otherwise. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I you? started reading a middle, well, listening to a middle grade horror mm-hmm. called um, Small Spaces. It's got creepy scarecrows. Oh. So it kind of reminds me of like a Hansel and Gretel type aspect. Um, but yeah, it's good so far. I'm not very far in at all. But it was definitely, it was one of those like recommended mm-hmm. for middle grade horror fans and I'm always I have a bunch of kids who are super into that um so other books that they've liked have included Mary Downing Hahn who is always coming out with new ones but they read Took um they want to read Girl in the Locked Room which is her latest one next um what else have they been reading oh um the Katie Allender stuff and also there's a book called The Collector so I think that's by K.M. Alexander or something like that so they've been reading that and I wanted to preview this before they might read it so that's about it for me with reading um, favorite things. We started watching Drag Race this week. Mm-hmm. We're going to do a watch party once we're more invested in the season. We're still figuring out who's who. Well, and I want to figure out what time works for everybody. Do we want to try and do it live or does recording? Like, I don't know that everybody has the capability to record. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or if you can watch it online or not. I'm not certain. You kind of through the VH1 app, I think, uh-huh. but the timing might end up yeah it might be weird mm. it might be best to just do it live then yeah um do it live always so maybe in a couple weeks when yeah. we figure out kinks we do have a patreon coming up this thursday this Thursday, yep we were gonna do it last thursday but i went on, last call. Went on call and it just became yeah non-doable for us so we're gonna do it this thursday when she gets off call yep um and it's we're gonna do um, crocheted or floss covered um, headphones like your headphones always get tangled yeah um, like earbuds with the cords or you want to say those are my headphones and not your headphones yeah um, and so make them unique we're gonna try that I've never done that before I have knitted I cord um, for my son's headphones before which he then promptly destroyed the headphone part so oh yeah I think two days after I oh. gave them to him. But, you know, that's that's what having a boy Middles, is. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, so maybe we'll start doing the live watching. It's not going to be this week. Maybe the following. We'll see. We'll, you know, just stay tuned. And we'll let <laughs> you know. Um, what else? Uh, we want to talk about SSK vendors. Yeah, so we have um, around 20 vendors at SSK every year. I cannot remember off the top of my head that we ha- how many we have this year. But if you are interested, even if you're not attending SSK as a full attendee, the vendor market is open in the afternoons um, from 1 to 4. 1 to 4 for people who just want to come and shop if you're local. And some vendors that we have coming this year. We have Suburban Stitcher. These are all in no order. Like, yeah. Like, it's, we we <laughs> let random, WordPress randomly random. select what order to put it in. Um, so Suburban Stitcher, who is known for her gorgeous yarn, but also bags. And her I think podcast, she started as she? bags. Yeah. She's from Texas I'll and she's got out. a podcast as well. Um, Acreworks, mm-hmm. who is known for spinning and knitting marvels of ingenuity and engineering. He does 3D some really printing cool stuff. Wonderfulness. Yeah, and some stuff that's um, other falls into the engineering kind of aspect of things. Desert Vista Dye Works, She'll who does back. a lot of self striping, and this will be her third or fourth time with us. But it's been like four years. Yeah, I want to say it's her fourth time coming but only her third time vending okay i could be wrong though lollipop yarns who also does great self-striping but she has shawl kits and some other stuff and she's a little bit more local hip strings who's from pittsburgh who has some really cool engineering stuff for spinners and knitters but also some really cool yarn and fiber blends 
And that's Jill and Nick. Yep. That squirrel fibers, who's Amy Beth, who is amazing. Ah, yeah, space you are not as clever as you thought you, you were, my friend. <laughs> Stress knits, who's got some really cute yarn. Yeah, a lot of it's um, not all of it, but a lot of it's kind of like speckle neutrals. They're really cool, really pretty. Um, Miss Babs, who Everybody I feel like needs no introduction, but she's got tons of different weights of yarn and fiber and just awesomeness and lots of cool kits. And she usually does a show colorway for SS guy. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jerry Rock Woodworks, who does cell phone stands, but also, um, like wooden. Turkish spindles. Turkish spindles, uh, shuttles for card weaving. She does cards for card weaving as well. Um, a lot of woodwork based products. She does like beautiful handmade pens, um, like, um, with the wood inlay and everything. Yeah. So a lot of woodwork based stuff and she's lovely as well. Yep. Um, I lost where we were. Leading Men Fiber Arts is so Steve and Andy, although Andy never comes. Because it's he's his lame. vacation from it's, Steve. <laughs> that's what he says. <laughs> they spend too much time together and it's his vacation from Steve. I understand. Like, no shade. <laughs> I get it. Um. Uh, so that's always very funny to me as well. Um, they do gorgeous yarn and occasionally some fiber. I think Amanda's um, coming as well. Okay. That's Steve's sister. I need to double check, but I'm pretty sure. Who also does the podcast yeah. with him. Starnitz, who does incredible bags. Yeah. Um, and rope bowls, which are really cool. Spotted Circus Alpacas and Llamas, who does um, some really cool roving, self-striping yarn. She's really into, like, machine knitting. And she's also a distributor for Struck mm -hmm. and um, the wheels. Um, Spinolution. Spinolution. Thank you. Gail's Art, who has been known for her sock blinks, but also before that she was dyeing gorgeous fiber and yarn, and now she's taken up dyeing fabric, mm -hmm. which is really cool. And she's expanded her, her base, your yarn bases, to include a heavier... Did you just say that? I did not. Oh, okay. I just said fabric. Okay. Yeah, she's added some heavier weight yarn mm -hmm. bases as well. Um, Two Guys Yarn Company, who hand mills a lot of their fiber and yarn, which is really, really interesting. Yeah, to, uh, Jean and David, they do great solids and tweeds. And they also don't, they're a non-superwash producer, yeah. which is great as well. Um, Teeny Button Studio, who's got a lovely wool cotton blend, but she does a lot of themed stuff after Harry Potter, Gilmore Girls, and a even lot of, like, some geek. yeah, Great British Bake Off geek culture. Really, really pretty speckly type schemes. Um, Bumblebee Acres. It's funny that those two are together because I feel like of all those, they are so close in that they have similar fandoms but very different bases yeah. and very different dyeing techniques. Bumblebee Acres is actually a working farm. Mm -hmm. Um, they raise sheep and dye their fiber and dye their yarn, but also have some incredible other bases. They are more Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, and Game of Thrones based. Um, if your geekery falls that way. Oh, you have stress nuts on there twice. Oh. That's where the issue is. Spotted You Fibers, who does yarn, but also has the new spinning wheel. Mm -hmm, the new carbon fiber spinning wheels, um, which I assume that they will be bringing. Yeah. Um, literally Things, mm -hmm. who's Vesper, yarn, self-striping. She also had mitten kits and some other really cool stuff yeah. as well. She was new to us last year. And yeah. We really enjoyed having her. New as in, the, that was the to first us. time she vended to, right. for us. Like, I've been buying her yarn since 2005. Since I think. before I knew Laura. Oh, she's my fave. Anyway, <laughs> I've been buying from Julia for a very long time and I have always enjoyed her yarn. Ship Direct Sheep, who is new to us, but we met her at Vicksburg and really, really enjoyed mm -hmm. her and how she runs her business. She does a lot of variegates, but she's just a good person as well. Yep. Um, and we're fortunate to have met her. Yarn Cafe Creations and Dragon Horde Yarns, which are a mother-daughter mm -hmm. duo. Yeah, and they're sharing a booth. Urban Girl Yarns, who has gorgeous solids. I just got um, a gray solid from her that's absolutely stunning. And her skeins are a little bit thicker. They're around 480 yards. And it's a different base. It's 90% merino, 10% nylon. So, um, it to me, it looks more like a Louette Gems base. Mm. Like a little bit of a tighter twist. I, I like it a lot. Yeah. I like the way it looks. 
And then Tuft Woolens, who has incredible perfumes and soaps. That's always one of my favorite things on, like, Friday night of SSK. You know, it's been a stressful few days. It's been fun. Don't get me wrong. We really enjoy it. But it's a lot of, like, just organizing and mental, like, gymnastics. And so when you walk in Friday evening you and you smell, smell the Tuft Woolens, you're like... Martha's here. <laughs> I also enjoy it. She's a very nice person, yeah. but I also enjoy, like, after I'll stick the soap in with my um, purchases, and then when I get home, like, all my bags smell mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, that's our market for this year. Um, hopefully no one will fall, not be able to come, fall out, but um, we do have some backups yep. lined up as well. So. We, we wish we had space for more people. Man, I wish that room was like double the size that it <sighs> yeah, is. Yeah, but um, I also am glad that it's like we, I feel like we make it profitable enough for people who can come and for true indies. For vendors. To actually come and not pay out the nose for the cost of the booth or the Wi-Fi or any of that stuff. So, yeah. um, we don't make any money on vendors. We, you know, that's, that's not what we're after. We're, we're hoping for them to make some money. Yeah. They pay for like basically our added insurance for those days and pipe and drape. Yeah. Which is super expensive. It is. It's ridiculous. Um, especially considering the, um, I'm not going to be mean and, <laughs> talk smack about people because that would be rude and I'm trying not to be a terrible human. Um, so Laura came up with an idea. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what the motivation was. Well, I was listening. I'm way behind on Knit More Girls and I was listening to Jasmine talk about how no one ever selects her finishing for Sash Dash. Because she, every year she puts in Oh, the for a rule change. change. Okay. For finishing okay. to be added yeah, and it right. never quite makes it. But also, like, we're getting towards the springtime, and I'm starting to get ready to put away my knits. And I was thinking of, like, all the washing that I need to do, because at the end of the season, I like to wash my knits so, before I put them away so they're nice and clean. Um, it That way, you don't have uh, bugs, mm -hmm. hopefully. Plus, you can just pull it out and wear it. Yeah, and, and you can pull cool it out enough. and wear it the, net, the following year if it's stored correctly. So, um... For us, ours go away, and then they go out for SSK, and then I rewash them after SSK. Yeah, um, and then they get put away in another they, plastic bin. Yeah, truth. Um, um, so we're talking about, and I have some things to repair. I keep finding on my socks, for some reason, I keep forgetting to weave in the ends at my toes of my socks. I have, like, seven pairs that the toes, just that one seam, like, the seam's there, but the stitches have started to loosen? Uh-uh. No, they're fine. But there's a big, long string. Oh. That was never woven in. Okay. That's, like, felted to the toe. So I need to go through all my socks and figure out what's going on with that. And um, actually repair those and weave in those ends. And I have some jeans that need to be darned and some other stuff. So we're talking about doing, like, a clothing conservation month in April where it's like finishing. Visible so that, mending. Yeah, so stuff's ready to wear. Basically get stuff ready to be put away so that it's ready to wear the, the next time it gets cool again. Or just mending. Like mending your socks. Yeah. Or like Laura was talking about her Darning. jeans. Yeah. Doing some visible mending there. Yeah. And um, there's some books that I want to purchase on that from Amazon as well. There's some Shashiko. Sh What's the name of the Sashiko. There you go. Um, and the stuff that you do that's supposed to be really, You should really, check really the thing cool. before you buy anything, because I might have the books. Okay. I will. Um, but yeah, so maybe we'll talk about one particular aspect each week. In yeah, and you're welcome to mend or wash or finish along with us, and then maybe that'll give us some added incentive to get that done. So yeah, I thought it's that was It's still not be a adding thing. Jasmine's thing to... <laughs> <laughs> well, we are going to allow her to, always, we always allow people to... Ask for rule changes. Oh, yeah. So, and absolutely. then the group as a whole votes on them. Like so. She just has to get enough of her massive audience <laughs> behind the rule change. Yeah. Um, It'll happen. Yeah, I have faith. I'm sure. Um, <laughs> okay. So I, I think that's it for this week. Um, we... I'm not sure when we're recording next week because we have company coming into town. We do. We might ask her if she wants to record. Yeah, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, 
but I, I'm off next week, so anytime works for me. Okay. Um, but yeah, so if you are a Patreon supporter, A, thank you. Yes, thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Um, it does help um, grease the wheels and getting things done around here, getting prizes or, or things like that shipped, um, as well as attending events that we then talk to you guys about and maybe bring home new vendor stuff to talk to you guys about. We or appreciate books to it. Review, yeah. yeah. Um, but where I was going with that is if you are a Patreon supporter, you should have gotten an email about the craft along dates and times. So the first one, the craft fail along thing that we do every month, um, like Laura said, we, we just didn't get time to do one in February. So we're doing two in March to make it up. First one will be this Thursday, which will be March the 7th. I think we said 6 30 PM. Yeah, because um, I have an after-school knitting club that I do. Last week I had two people show up with boys. Yay! Me super happy. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. So and one of which uh, we read. He's a lefty, so we read. He was struggling with picking. Yeah. Or, uh, with throwing, so we went to picking. That's wonderful. I thought so. I'm stoked about that. Yeah, very sweet kids too. So, yeah. And their parents picked them up in a timely fashion, which I was stoked about. Yeah. I, tr I was that kid that was always picked up late. Oh. Always. We never got to do anything, so that was never a concern. Um, until I was in high school and I was in band, but my house was two miles from, well, a mile and a half, I think, from where the school was, so I just walked. Anyway, that's more than you really cared about. <laughs> you were not that invested. Um... You guys have a great week. We will yeah. talk to you again either Thursday or next week. Um, and that's all I got. Have awesome. a good one. Bye, Bye y'all.